Hello, how's it going? Tenor here, and welcome back to another episode of our Lands of Zankar series. Today we are in a weird place and wearing weird clothing because <laughs> uh, we're in a uh, we're in my creative world because I wanted to test out this little tube idea that I was playing with a few episodes ago and just see what it looked like in this world. And also, I have an idea for some walkways above the water uh, if I can get out of the water. So this is something that I was thinking that I would put above the ocean, connecting different things together because now we have our villagers, which we need to go check on because they were not spawning or breeding rather. So this is what I was thinking to have for above our ocean for the villagers to walk through, which keeps them safe. You see the fences and the dark prismarine, uh, they're actually stairs. So that will keep the villagers safe from any of the, um, uh, what do you call, trident throwing drowned. Uh, to Humahu, thank you, you let me know that they are a threat, so we want to keep them safe and guarded from that, and this is a good way I thought to do that, because there's still, I can put the carpets on here that match the quartz, which I can just jump on and hop out if I ever needed to go into the ocean for whatever the reason, but, yeah, a nice little way to bring some green and white together, I think that works pretty well, and I think that looks good against the blue, so, uh, let's get rid of these guys, so with that tube idea, this is what I was thinking, let me first grab myself my Death Strider boots, because uh, that is what I have in my world. I'll put those back there. So I have my boots on. I will give myself speed, so effect, give to me, oops, nope, nope, get rid of that. I don't want that. Speed, 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 and I'll just do a bunch of speed, and effect, we'll also do some conduit power. Give to me conduit power for a little while because at my, oops, too much, too much conduit power. Okay, so now I have my speed like I will have from the beacon at my base and I have the conduit power so I can see underwater. I also have the depth strider so I can actually combine that with the speed and swim around a lot faster in the water. So let me go hop down the tube from the top. This is kind of what it would look like from a surface area. Um, and then you just hop on down and and then there we go oh boy yep here we go we can swim all the way through turn around and just go through these tunnels kind of like that you can go up you can go down and hop straight on out i like it and then if i get a dolphin in there that'll even oh boy that'll make the effects even stronger that'll be crazy so that's what i was thinking for that on the outside i'm not too sure how i feel about it entering like a cave or a wall or something like this. I don't know if I like that. Maybe if I grab some smooth quartz and block that out like that, maybe? Maybe we could do something of that nature. And then maybe with the stairs to make it flow a little bit nicer, we can kind of bring, nope, not like that. Nope, not like that. Bring them out. I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe. Let me try it on all four sides. Oh, I'm breaking things. There we go, like that. Like that, and like that. So what do we think about that? Because from the inside, that should look exactly the same. Let's hop it down in here. Yeah, so nothing looks different from here. You can see it. No, you can't even see it at all from right here. It all looks the same. So yeah, it looks the same exact from in here, from inside the tube. From the outside, it just kind of looks like it's grabbing onto the wall. What do you think? Let me know what you think about that. I like that. I think I, I think that'll work. And also, what do you think about this? <laughs> All right, that's enough time in our creative world. Let's go ahead and jump back into our regular world and check on the villagers and see if we can figure out how to make them start breeding. Maybe they just need more food. I don't know. Okay, so we're at, back here at the base and <laughs> that little Pegasus thing. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. There are so many things I have to collect. I don't even know where to start. Oh boy, we'll go take a look at that shortly. But first, let's go see if we can figure out with our villagers what is going on. I think it's just a food issue. Um, so let's see what we... Whoa, my. Ho, 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 wow. Um, I'm afraid to open this. Okay, quick. 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 Okay. What? There, There's baby villagers. Oh, my goodness. Where'd you all come from? How did... I wasn't even looked. What? I'm so confused. It looks like you needed some. <laughs> oh, Jungle Alliance helping out again. Oh, thanks so much. 
I guess it was a food issue. Maybe, maybe you just gave him food? Well, thanks for whatever you did. If it's food, I guess I'll just keep doing that. I don't really know, but that works out. That's really cool. Um, I need to adapt this a little bit to where the babies can walk out and go into a tunnel to go back that way. And I don't know. I got to take the babies out of here and not be lost there. So what I was thinking is the babies walk out, drop down into something else that the adults cannot get out of or not get into because they can't pass. Anyway, and then the babies would end up somewhere else and then they can grow up and walk around the base. Okay, well, being as that is, I guess, figured out, thank you, Jungle Alliance. I'm guessing Skunk Monkey, thanks for that. Uh, let's see, what does Pegasus actually want? She wants a whole lot of stuff. So, golden carrots, I have some of those. Potatoes, I don't think I have any of those. Looks like I need to get some farms going. Bales of hay, grass, yeah. Ooh, blocks of, ooh, ooh, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's do, let's do, where, where, there it is. Let's do one, two, one, two. Okay, there is blocks of grass and... Well, that's like, there we go, and blocks of dirt. There we go. Block of grass, block of dirt. There we go. That's good. That's good. Coarse dirt and pot. That's supposed to have a, a D, I think. Podzel. That's okay. One of those is from spruce trees. I think it's a podzel. Uh, soul sand, mycelium, brown concrete powder, brown mushroom blocks, brown wool. What's with you in brown? Terracotta, brown terracotta, clay, dead bushes, grass, sugar cane, and green wool. I need some farms. Okay, I've set up some basic building materials, and I think I'm just gonna go with the basic uh, wheat farm because I need hay bales for for the Pegasus, and then I also am going to be able to use that for bread for my villagers. And I'm thinking I'll just go straight out, ouch, straight out from this spot here. So maybe something just right around, I don't know, like right off of here? Not too far out. Awesome. So my thought is just that there are going to be four different platforms in each of these. So if you can imagine this line here cuts it down the middle and this cuts it down the middle. So in each each of the four corners is going to be some crops um, with a dispenser of water that's going to push everything out towards the center here uh, once it's time to harvest. And I can go and replant it and I can repeat that as many times upwards as I would like to. So let me try to get a f little foundational place in here. I'll leave a room for the walls here and go here. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. Is this gonna be five, six by six? Okay, so what I might end up doing is putting a dispenser here and here that would, well, one block lower. That would dispense the water out like this and maybe just have a full time block here occupying that space. Cause then it'll still, yeah, it'll still push everything out this way. And then you'll have a one block drop here, so I guess that way technically I could choose if I wanted all of these four to- yeah, I think I'll do that actually. I can keep things separated. So if I wanted all of this to be one crop and tower this way up into the sky, and I could have it all be into here, and then the next one would be in this corner, and then the third one here, and the fourth one here, I could do that. That could be a thing. Okay, cool. Let me copy this out a few more times, and I think we've got a- I think we've got a good system in line here. Okay, I think we are all set up. So we've got our redstone here, so whenever you push the button, it's going to send a redstone signal up through here into the repeater, which is going to go into this dispenser here and this dispenser here, which also reminds me I need to fill that up with water. I forgot to fill up my water bucket. There we go. One of the beauties of living on the ocean. Okay, and then that one has its water bucket. Perfect. And so simultaneously, it's going to send a redstone signal through these repeaters, which will slow down the signal. And then, again, put it through this one and this one. So what should happen is all the water should come out, flood all the seeds and crops and everything into this one little one-by-one one hole. And then once the repeaters go through again, it should suck up the water again. So let's try it out. We've got water out. Good. And then just a second later, water comes back. Wonderful. I've also got some streams of water. You can kind of hear that going right underneath here. So it's just coming from this block going down and this block going down towards the middle, and I'll be doing that against, well, all of these, actually. Once I get 4x4, four four, I can have a water stream going up where all these stone bricks are, and, yeah, go out in these kind of corners like this. So I'll do one out there, one out there, one out there. It'll be good. All right, so we've got everything in here. I think we have 34 total seeds we should be getting back if this works. So let's see, I've got nothing on me. We will push the button and see it all happen. It all gets pushed. Oh, yes, that's plenty of time. Great, now do we have 34? 34, 34, 34, 34, bingo! 
That is exactly what we want. Awesome! Okay, I've gotten all four quadrants figured out, rewired the redstone. I think I've got everything set up. Uh, there's lights everywhere, as you see with the sea lantern, so there's no issues of anything spawning around here. Oh, uh, we should... Uh-oh. I need to put slabs. Maybe I should change some of these full blocks to slabs. Hmm. I'll give that a shot. Uh, but yeah, everything should be good, so I'm gonna go ahead and test it. You see we've got the same kind of redstone idea here, so you push the button, redstone goes through here, one repeater, and into this middle one which goes up and splits off to both sides and goes off to this corner and then around to that back corner this one goes from this front corner and to that back corner and then at the same time this long redstone trail comes through a little longer than the last and then does the same thing it'll turn off these dispensers in the front and back and then front and back so let me see there's water out good now we should be getting water back in soon yes that is exactly how we want to see it happening. And see, this will be one tube straight down, another tube, another tube, and another. Oh my goodness. I think it's finished. I did it. Episode 34. I have a crop farm. Look at that. Okay, great. So I've got a little bit of each crop. I've got enough to do an entire thing of regular seeds, uh, probably an entire thing of beetroots, and then a couple potatoes and a couple of carrots. Now where each of the crops is going to fall, we need to tunnel straight down. So let's get our stone and just bring this all the way to the sea floor. Surely we're somewhere close to the storage room, I'd imagine. That's the goal, anyway. That's what... Hey! Look what it is! It's the storage room! Oh, that's exciting. One block of sand at a time. Great, so now we're down here at the bottom. We can see all the way up each of these tubes, all the way to the surface. So we can take the chest that we have and the hoppers that we have and that should make everything flow into the corresponding uh, chest. See one of those small tube designs would be what I could use to get from the bottom up and over to this platform here. That's the kind of use I'm thinking about having for it. So, or, or I could even put the button down at the bottom. That would be cool. I think we're gonna have everything good. You got the hoppers down at the bottom. Okay. Let's try this out. Here we go. That's not what I wanted to do. Oh no, I fell. Alright, everything is cleaned out. That must mean they're all down at the hoppers. Let's go take a look. Yes, I've got my potatoes and the carrots. Yeah, I definitely messed up all these signs. Wheat and seeds. And beetroot and beetroot seeds. Oh, 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 oh. My only issue with this is that uh, whenever I harvest everything at the top, then it all comes flowing down here. And so I don't have anything at the top to keep planting with. So maybe... Maybe I'll have to move the button down here. I can have a chest that sends items up to the top. I don't know. This is getting complicated. I don't know. Anywho. I have, I have chickens. The chicken attack has come back. Oh my goodness. Are the chickens down there? Chickens? I don't see any. Anyway. That's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video. Uh, next week, I'm probably going to be coming in and finishing up some designs for that farm area. I made it better. Skunk monkey. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. I like it. I like it. Ooh. What is this? It's a four-leaf clover. Oh, that's fun. There's chickens up here, too. What? What is that? Lucky you. Lucky, fellow Lucky Zankarian, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. It's time to see how lucky you are. A prize has been set up at negative 1402 and 962. To win the prize, you need to be lucky and lucky. Yes, doubly lucky. There will be a build set up close, close to the prize, which will determine the winner. A number will randomly generate... Oh my goodness. A number will be randomly generated, and whoever has that number wins. Some people will have more numbers than other people. The person who collects the most rabbit's feet will get the most numbers, followed by the next highest, and so on. Is this like a lottery raffle thing? Uh, if you collect no feet, you will get one number. A collection area will be set up near the prize as well. You will have until March 28th to collect, to, to collect feet. After that, the winner will be selected. Only feet collected after March 11th count. Please be honest. Good luck, everyone. Sponsored by Jungle Alliance. This is so cool. This is such a neat idea. All right, Jungle Alliance. Let's go. 
All right, I guess maybe next episode we'll go check out what that is, whatever is at those coordinates. We'll have to go see what that is over there. So make sure you stay tuned. I'm also going to go ahead and try to close up the this area a little bit because those drop holes pose a threat. Um, I, I accidentally fell down one. And yeah, you know, it's it's a dangerous place. But this is cool. I'm excited. Okay, I'm going to pop this back right there for right now. Anyway, thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like that or <laughs> hit that like button down below. You know what I mean. And subscribe to see what this whole treasure lottery raffle thing is all about. Oh, thanks again so much for watching. I will see you next time.